So um, in Korea, we use uh, an alcohol like beverage called makwali to rehydrate these ingredients. Here, you can use beer. So this is a, a formula that's, that's uh, quite essential, so you have to memorize this. The, the dry materials that we just mentioned, the licorice, angelic, and so forth, you have to use the amount that can fill one-tenth of your container. So to rehydrate, we use uh, beer. And the amount of beer to be used is a three times the amount of your dry material. And then the amount of, of uh, beer, the volume, would be um, one half of your container in the end. So as you can see, um, the combination of the beer and then the dry material would, will fill one half of your container. I can't. Yes, so each, in, each material you need a separate container. Right, so for each uh, ingredient, you use a, its own container, a separate container. And then with the re rehydrated product, to, in order to ferment it, you add uh, brown sugar. And so the volume in the end needs to be, needs to fill two thirds of your container with the brown sugar. So at this point, the amount of sugar that you use, you end up using is the same amount of your, your material that was in the container. So the, the ingredients of, that you're using there. So let's say that we're using a, a container that is, uh, has a volume of 20 liters. So how much angelica should you use? It's one tenth of the volume. So two kilograms would equal two liters worth of material. So how much beer do we need to rehydrate to, uh, two kilograms of, of dry material? Six liters. Three times, three times the dry material is what you need. So the volume at this point of all your materials in your container should be one half, so 10 liters. And when you cover this up, you cover it with, with paper that can, where, where air can flow through. The external temperature in this state is 23 to 25 degrees. Those are the conditions that you need for, for this stage. So you leave um, the dry material soaked in beer for one to two days. So I told you that you add brown sugar, the amount, the same amount of your starting material. 
So how much would that be? How much brown sugar? Two kilograms? Two kilograms? No. No? Okay, so you have two kilograms of your dry material and then six liters of, of beer. So, yeah, uh, so it's those two in combination. So you need eight kilograms total to be equivalent to the six liters of beer plus two kilograms of dry material. Can, do you follow this? Question? Right, so basically one kilogram equals one liter. So those are the, the conversion between volume and weight is, is pretty straightforward. Kilogram is, is a liter. So now do you understand? 이 흑설탕까지 넣은 이 양이 3분의 2가 돼야 돼요. And so the volume that you end up with when you add these two together is two thirds of the container. 여기는 3기가 있는 거죠. So in the remaining one third is where you have the three energies that we talked about. 흑설탕을 넣고는 5일에서 7일을 놔둬요. So after you apply the brown sugar, you leave it for five to seven days. And then after that, after the five to seven days, you add um, uh, vodka. Soju is the equivalent of vodka up to the brim of the container. So after you've applied your, you've filled your container with uh, vodka, then you cover the whole container with, with plastic. And this period lasts for two weeks. Vodka, I guess, so one third. To fill one third. So you fill to the top, so that would be one third of 20 liters. So that's about 12 liters. So when you have a 20, 20 liter container, you get about 12 liters of beer for vodka consumed. So just to review, we took this dry material, let's say Angelica, and to re rehydrate, we used uh, beer. And then we covered the container with paper. So this, this is where you've the dry material has sort of bloated in beer and have, has rehydrated. And then to ferment this material, we added brown sugar. And then we covered it back up with paper. And after covering the container, we wait five to seven days. And then we add the vodka. Okay, and you wait two weeks after adding vodka, but every day after the application of vodka, you have to stir the contents of the container every day. Because there's alcohol in it, you cover it with, with vinyl to prevent evaporation. So the, the alcohol content should be around 30 to 35 percent. Uh, 
but what's most more common around these parts is the, a 40% vodka or, or with whiskey. More vodka. So what, what you would use is the 40% vodka. The reason why we use vodka with the alcohol is to stabilize the reaction of fermentation because it will go on indefinitely. So, any questions so far? Okay. What kind of container? What kind of container? A, a, uh, a clay pot is best if you don't have a clay pot, a glass container, or a plastic container, polyethylene. Yes? So if you just add the numbers, it doesn't make sense. But since we're dealing with volume, 부피기 때문에 하면 발효가. Right. So 부피기 때문에 이거 When you add sugar, it dissolves, and so the volume is not going to be the exact conversion from kilograms to you know, weight to volume. So when you do it in practice, it'll it'll be better. Yes. Okay, so 이, 이 재료를 다 계속 쓸수 있는지 아니면 한번 네, 쓸수 있는지. 다섯 번. So, 다섯 번 재탕 가능합니다. So these ingredients can be reused five, five times. Used five times. So reuse four times. So the question is, why make so much at once if you are going to use so little? This material is not enough to use so much. Why do you need to use so much? Ah, uh, because so you know that in the case of wine, it's better the more it matures. So it's, it's the same thing with the herbal nutrients. It, you're, it's okay to use it right after you make it, but, but the more it matures, the better it becomes. Okay, just two more questions. So you're asking if there are any indicators to know if the fermentation has gone well enough to, because there are a lot of variables. Right, okay. The, the most important thing in fermentation is the, the temperature. 되어 and then the, the volume, the amount of material has to be two-thirds of the container. And also you need to avoid direct sunlight. Also you need good air circulation. If your ground, if your floor is too cold, then then 
it's not that favorable to fermentation. So, so these are the ideal conditions of uh, fermentation for two days and five to seven days after uh, brown sugar. So these are the conditions that, that he just mentioned that are optimal for, uh, uh, for fermentation. Let's say uh, that you see mold occurring on your, in your material or uh, bubbles forming. That's an indicator that you have too little brown sugar added. That doesn't mean that you, you have to dump a whole lot more brown sugar. You probably need to add maybe 80 grams more to correct that. Okay. One more question. Okay. If I wanted to do this in a much smaller proportion, would it still work? 작은 양으로 해도 되는데 너무 그릇이 낮으면 이, 이 깊이가 너무 낮으면 발효가 일어나질 않아요. 그래서 깊이가 좀 있는. Okay. The question is, can you scale it down and make it smaller? The answer is yes, but you need a certain amount of depth of your container to be full of material. So you want something, I guess, maybe narrower. Uh, so it's an issue of using the right containers. And there. So what you get out of uh, this process is about 15 liters worth of, of uh, material, nutrients. So you can reuse the original material that was rehydrated. You can reuse that four more times. So the first, from the first round, you have 15 liters of, of nutrients that you can harvest. So when you pour, pour out the liquid of 15 liters, what remains is the solid, uh, solid uh, refuse. So that's the rehydrated uh, material that you used in the beginning. So you put that back into your container. So now it's in, in the container. So you fill the container to one third with water. Okay. So you, you refill to one third of the container the solution that you just harvested, the nutrients that you just harvested. Out of the 15 liters, you put one to fill one third of the container again. Oh, sorry. You add back five liters of the 15 that you just harvested, and the volume that you get with the the original material will be a bit less than two thirds. Will fill a bit less than two thirds of the container. And then you add the vodka 
And what you, the amount of that you, vodka that you add is 12 liters, the same amount as you added before. 맨 처음에는 이 아군까지 찰랑 찰랑 했는데 두 번째 할 때는 요 밑에서 찰랑 찰랑 합니다. So the first time you applied the vodka, it filled the container to the brim. But this time around, it will be a bit less below the brim of the container. And then for two weeks, you, you stir the contents every day. And then you separate out the liquid. So the first time around, you get 10 liters. The second time, you get 15 liters. Then the third time around, you add back the solids from the previous process. And then you add the five liters of, of this material, the, the nutrient solution. And you get two thirds of the volume filled. And then you, you add again 12 liters of vodka and wait two weeks. And then you always have to cover the container in this process with plastic. So, since you added back the five liters from the second uh, harvest, so the second volume would be 10 liters again, just like the first one. So, third time around, again you get 15 liters. And so, since you're going to reuse the five liters from the third reaction, what you get is 10 liters. And same thing for the fourth time. And then in the end, the final volume that you collect is 15 liters because you're not using the five liters to, for the next, for another reaction. So if you use uh, 20 liters and do it five times, what you end up with is 55 liters of material. So for each ingredient, for example, garlic, ginger, whatever, you always get 55 liters worth of end product. So now you have also uh, the non-dry material, the fresh material, namely garlic and ginger. Do you harvest uh, garlic here? Did somebody, anyone produce garlic here? So so we use garlic whole, uh, garlic that has been harvested uh, very recently, that has been freshly harvested. The best ingredient to use is a whole garlic. And we use it whole with the roots and the skin attached. And if you have to buy your garlic, sometimes you buy it uh, peeled, readily, already peeled. And then if you leave your garlic uh, for a while, then it will start sprouting. I said before that when we apply brown sugar, it is the same amount of, of the ingredient that you're using. So 
In the case of the dried ingredient, the, the amount that you're dealing with is the original dried ingredient plus the, the beer that you use to rehydrate. In the case of the non-dried fresh materials, what, how much brown sugar should you use? So I just said that the amount of brown sugar that I use is the same as the uh, fresh ingredient. So before, what, in the case of 20 liters, I used 8 kilograms of brown sugar. And so we use the same amount of garlic. So it's 8 kilograms of garlic. And the sprouting of garlic indicates that the conditions have, you're having dry conditions. So if you have to use garlic that have sprouted, then you use uh, a bit of uh, makgeolli, the beer, to rehydrate the garlic. If you use 8 kilograms of whole garlic, then it'll pretty much fill the whole container. So you don't use 8 kilograms, but you use 6 to 6.5 kilograms to get two-thirds of your container full. So you don't just uh, use your, your garlic as it is, you have to crush it first. In Korea, where we do a lot of fermentation, if you look at our knives, the bottom of the knife is always flat. Over here, what I see is that your knives are round at the, at the end. Isn't that true? In Korea, we use our knives uh, for our fermentation in that we crush our garlic with our, the end of our knives. Over here, we, we predominantly chop with our knives. So fermentation is, involves the extraction of liquid from materials. When you chop, you don't get a lot of liquid out of your material. When you crush, you get a lot more liquid coming out. So for garlic, we always have to crush. And don't wash these ingredients thinking that you need to clean them. As much as you can, just leave the soil intact on the, on the garlic and use it as it is. So from the start, you have to add both the, the garlic and the brown sugar because you don't need to rehydrate garlic. And you leave it there for five to seven days. And then you add the vodka. And 
covered with plastic wrap and you wait two weeks. And you can also re remake with the same materials five times. Now you have garlic. So with, even with garlic, you don't peel it. You just uh, crush it as it is. How, how much of garlic do you think we need? Oh, ginger, sorry. How much ginger do we need? Six? Six point. Eight kilograms. The process of making the ginger ingredient is the same as garlic. So from the first to the fourth cycle, you get 10 liters each, and then the, the last one you get 15 liters. So for each type of ingredient, you can mix together uh, all the thing, all the liquids that you harvested from the first to the fifth, all in one container. Yeah, Understand? I know you're. It's hard right now. Okay, so we'll just take a break and I'll, I'll continue explaining for a little bit. But during our break, why don't you try the OHN that we have in the front. Uh, when you have uh, OHN that has a vodka in it, so don't get drunk and sleep. We're not responsible for drunk driving. So uh, don't drink too much. Was that good? So, the plants would also be invigorated if they had it, right? Yes. So you shouldn't. Even, you should leave some for your plants. Don't take it all. So what you need to do now is just practice making these materials. You've heard us go through how to, I know, the, the methods. You have the books and the DVDs, so what remains is to put it in practice. You can use the OHN to marinate your meat when you cook it, and that will really soften the meat as well. So now we have to make calcium. So most of you would have had to buy a lot of calcium for your inputs. Do you also take calcium for yourself as a nutrient? So when your body absorbs calcium, uh, it's in an ionized form, but it doesn't be, get absorbed by itself, but it's in a combination with other elements that it's be able to be absorbed.
But even then, the majority of the calcium is, uh, is passed through our body. It doesn't get absorbed. But we've, we have this sense of security thinking that we've absorbed enough for all of the calcium that we've taken. And so in the calcium of calcium, the, the ion that it combines with to be most optimally absorbed is uh, acetic acid. Calcium uh, complex or combined with acetic acid has the highest uh, absorbability in our bodies. So I heard some good reports from a cancer institute in Korea. So after a cancer patient has gone through surgery, the next thing that he needs to do is to uh, control his or her diet. So yeah, you need to control the intake of your food because you have to dis distinguish what what need, you know what foods are good uh, so there's no there's this risk that you're, you're going to take something that's not good for you the doctor who looked at our uh, calcium solution was amazed and wondered how we could make this form of calcium, soluble calcium, that is really good for the uptake in our bodies. So now, hopefully, you're eagerly expecting um, how to make this calcium solution. Yeah. To have that big of an effect, we need to make it correctly. The material that you can find a lot of calcium in is uh, eggshells. And so even among uh, eggs, uh, the eggs produced uh, from chickens cooped up in a cage is different from from ones produced uh, in uh, better environments, better conditions. Okay, so ideally what you want is eggs of fertilized eggs rather than unfertilized eggs. So in terms of strict nutrition, you might evaluate um, the fertilized and the unfertilized eggs as being equivalent, but in a ex, you know, extra nutritional level, in terms of biology, the, the, the difference is very big between the fertilized, fertilized and the unfertilized. Not only is there calcium in, in eggshells, there's other organic matter and uh, uh, moisture content as well. And so um, we are going to start working on, on making this material. But first we're going to make, uh, go through the process of removing the organic matter and the the moisture from the eggshells. Yeah. 
let's say you're cooking some sweet potatoes. If you just throw a sweet potato in a hot burning stove, will that uh, cook the sweet potato well? No. no. Because what happens then is that the sweet potato will burn on the outside and, and blacken on the outside, but will stay raw on the inside. So what kind of fire do you need to, to cook a sweet potato well? Yeah, you need a small fire, a, a weak fire, to, to be able to cook it well. So in order to cleanly remove the, the moisture and the organic matter from our eggshells, we're going to use the lowest possible heat. So here you have a, a pan, and it's at a temperature where even if you, can, if you touch it with your fingers, you will not burn. So the fire is very weak. And so you have, you have a stove here and then over it a fire pan. And rather than just breaking the eggshells uh, outside of the pan, you, you can just put it in the pan and break it as you go along. Um, as the eggshells uh, break down, just continue to, to stir, stir the material inside the pan. And so you'd, have, you'd see a separation of the outer part shell and then the inner layer within the, the shell. So maybe, you may be able to see that so the inner thin layer is being separated from the outer shell. So the inner layer will seem like an opaque uh, film in the, in the beginning, but in time you'll see that it turns in whitish into a like a paper-like su substance, and then in the end, it will sort of break down into an ash-like uh, substance and kind of evaporate and fly away. And so upon completion of this step, what you need is the removal of this inner uh, film layer from the shells. It takes about 40 minutes. Yes. 마, 마른 상태라는 거죠. 지금 제가 40분 걸린다라고 한 것은 지금 바로 계란을 깬 상태에서 한 것이 40분 걸리는 거고 여러분들이 계란을 프라이에서 드셔서 계란을 계란 껍질을 계속 어, 모았다면은 한 20분에서 25분 정도 걸릴 거예요. So it takes about 40 minutes if you had just uh, cracked the egg and obtained the shells. From then on, it's 40 minutes. But if you say uh, you cooked your eggs before and you have the shells remaining, it might take about 20 minutes. So it, it is in a dry state. Yeah. So in the end, you have this uh, container full of uh, particles of eggshell. Uh, and and so you use brown rice vinegar to dissolve the eggs. Brown rice vinegar needs to be two thirds of the container that you're using. So don't dump all the eggshells in 
uh, all at once, but do it gradually while stirring the solution, the brown rice vinegar, uh, clockwise. And, and the uh, particles of eggshells will not just drop to the, the bottom of the container, but they'll sort of, uh, like three seconds, lay in the bottom and then sort of pop right back up in the vinegar. And then you cover the container with uh, paper. So, no matter how much eggshells you put in, you should not be, you should not cover the bottom part of the solution. It, sh it should all be floating up. And then the, the mixture ratio of, uh, of the eggshell to brown rice vinegar should be one part eggshell to ten parts brown rice vinegar. If you, even if you intend to have a, get a higher concentration of calcium, uh, there's only a, a certain level of saturation that it can achieve with, with calcium. So you leave this container for seven days in a uh, temperature of 25 to 27 degrees, 23 to 25 degrees centigrade. What you'll see is a continual going up and down of the eggshells within the brown rice vinegar. So in the end, um, all the eggshells should remain uh, at the bottom of the container. You, you should see no movement of the eggshell particles going up and down in the solution. They should all be left uh, in the bottom. So that is about seven days from the beginning. And then after you're, you're done with this process, you have to uh, remove the liquid, separate the solid from the solution. So you filter out the solution from, from the eggshells that, that are remaining. And with the eggshells that you, you have left, you can mix it with IMO4 and soil, mix it all together. And that can also be used as a calcium source. You can use, use that uh, in, in liquid form to apply to your plants. You understand? So as you may see during your hands-on application step uh, time, uh, you'll see that the eggshells will, will be kind of dissolving in the, in the vinegar. But a good test of whether or not you, you did it right is if the color at the end, color of the solution at the end 
is it's the same as the color of the solution when you start it off. The color of the vinegar, that is. If the result, the resulting solution is of a darker color than the original brown rice vinegar, then you can use that to apply to the roots, the soil. The ones that have not changed color or lighter color, you can apply to your leaves, the, the foliar application of your plants. So we can use also make a calcium phosphate solution in the same way. So water soluble, the calcium phosphate is abundant in bone. So you can use all kinds of uh, bone as your material, but chicken bone isn't as good as the others. You can use cow bone or pig bones. Another good source is uh, fish bone. But you have to use uh, a well-boiled, well-cooked, or boiled, or steamed uh, bone. You need to uh, grill the bones so that it turns into a blackened charcoal state. So, uh, so this also you have to do with uh, a weak flame so that it doesn't all burn up. <laughs> so you see that over here you see some, some gray areas in the cooked bone. So if, if the color is gray, it means that it's, it's not cooked as thoroughly as it should be. But there's um, a bit of a finesse in this step because if, if you overcook it, then it might turn white. The properties of ash and um, charcoal is a bit different. So you have to concentrate and, fo and focus on making charcoal and not ash. So as before, the amount of vine rice vinegar in the container should be two thirds. And you use one tenth of the volume of uh, brown rice vinegar. Um, that's the amount of uh, bone that you should use. So in my view, since it rains a lot here at Hilo, even in the dry season, you probably need to use a lot of uh, calcium phosphate. So this also, you have to leave in brown rice vinegar for one week and then filter out the solids. Any questions? Okay. If you like the food, you like the food, then you like the food. Yes. 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 So calcium phosphate is, is pretty much universal in that any type of food that you have, 
you want to provide the optimal physical structure of, of the food. So that's where calcium phosphate is used. So you may know that even if we don't consume uh, vitamin D uh, per se, if you go out into the sun, our body creates our own vitamin D. What the important thing that you have to keep in mind is that you, you don't have control over all the variables. You're not providing all, the, all that the plants need yourself. So it's because what, what you have control over and the amount of influence that you can have over your plants is very little. The majority is dictated by nature and what's given by your environment. And so the reason why we put so much effort in, in making these uh, nutrients is because we want to rectify, correct the deficiencies that we've created for ourselves. Two questions. Kurose. Uh, 갈아야 되나요? 아, 갈지 마세요. 너무 공급이 작으면 공급이 너무 세밀하다 그래서 다 많이 나오는 게 아니에요. 여러분들이 쓰는 여 가지가 어떤 건지 모르겠는데 이여 가지를 통과해서 여기에 그 입자 굉장히 간 것이 모여지면 노즐이 막혀요. 그러니까 너무 달게 하시면 오히려 손해라는 걸 아셔야 돼요. The question is, do you need to grind the, the material? The answer is no. Uh, does, finer particles don't mean that it's going to solubilize any better. And also, if the particles get too fine, it can't be filtered out. It may block your sprayer. But the question is, do you need to do Yeah, so you can use your bones whole. For example, you eat kalbi, then you get those nice chunks of Bone. That's that's good. Keran uh, kopchul gyeongyeo. So eggshells. You're asking if you can reuse the same eggshell to make more solution. Yeah, so one one egg a day. You can collect, and when you have enough. You can use that to make a solution. So, um, 곡식이라 뿌린 다음에 하는 얘기인가요? 작물에게. 작물에게. 작물에게 작물이 무슨 병이 났어도 바로 뿌리자마자 효과가 나타나기 때문에 굉장히 그 좋은 자료입니다. 오케이. 직접 시비할 때. So we use foliar application, direct application on our plants for all these materials. So the effect that you get is very, very quick in a matter of a couple of days. So that's a common practice in, in these natural farming methods. Okay, one last question and then we'll move on to practice. I didn't... Um, so I think the question is, some of the eggs that you get in the store are, have been treated. So is that okay to use? Good. 
그 처리를 하고 뭐 약, 약품도 있고 그런데 그거 써도 괜찮냐고. 아 그래서 제가 그 그런 거보다는 그 이런 게좀 불편했는데 태우면은 그래도 다 태워지니까 사용해요. So it's preferable to use, you know, natural organic eggs, but in the process of burning, uh, you can remove most of these chemicals. 불껍질? You can also use uh, oyster shells or 굴만 굴만요? 굴 뭐? 조개 okay. Any shells from the sea you can use in the same way to make calcium solution. White coral, coral이 뭐야? White coral, coral. Yeah, it, I think so. Yes, yes. You can use white coral to make calcium solution. Any shell is 